Okay, in this video we're going to go over the 11 main geyser basins in Yellowstone to help you plan your trip. Number 1, Mammoth Hot Springs. With Mammoth there's kind of two ways to see it. If you drive on the upper loop, you'll come like this, and this road leads into the little town of Mammoth. The hot springs, though, are located on a hill just to the south of the city here. So if you pull into this road, it's a one-way road, and it just drives around. You can see a few of the hot springs just by driving around there, but you can see there's these little parking spots here. And if you park there, you can then just wander on the boardwalks down however you want to down to the bottom. What we do sometimes is we'll have somebody drop us off up here and then they'll drive down to the bottom and wait for us down there. Okay, the next spot is Norris Geyser Basin, which is right here at the intersection of these, these two roads here. Here's a map of Norris Geyser Basin. When you come in, you'll park right around here. You'll walk out and you'll see this little building, kind of a visitor center type of a thing. And from there, you can either head north and do the Porcelain Basin and walk around there. And this just looks like a wasteland. Uh, not a lot of geysers exploding or anything like that. And then you can also walk south and do the lower basin here, or the back basin is what they call it. If you walked both of them, it's about three miles. One main thing to key in here on the lower loop is the steamboat geyser. This one's interesting because it is the tallest geyser in the world. It shoots upwards of three to 400 feet tall. By comparison, Old Faithful is about 150 to 180 feet this geyser used to go off about once a year, maybe not even that, for many, many, many years. Suddenly, in 2018, it went off over 30 times, and in 2019, it went off 50 times. So it's interesting that it has become so active in recent years. Probably worth a stop just to see if you get lucky. This year, in 2020, it's been going off about every five to seven days. The next area is this Artist Paint Pots area. Now, they call this the, the Gibbon Geyser Basin. And it's, it's actually quite a large area with a lot of geysers that are off the beaten path. Really, the main one that you're that you'd probably go to here is the Artist Paint Pots. And this is just a little trail that's about a mile long and you'll just see some different colorful paint pots um, some that are kind of murky looking the next area is called the lower geyser basin which really consists of this fountain paint pot and firehole lake drive so let's zoom in on this firehole lake drive a little bit this is a one-way road, so you got to come in this way. And there are a couple of main geysers to keep an eye out for. This Great Fountain Geyser is the only predictable geyser in the park that is not in the Old Faithful area. That means that you can check the app before you go to the park in the morning to see what they're predicting for that geyser to go off. When it goes off, it lasts an hour or two. Because this white dome geyser right here is right by, you might get lucky and see that one as well because it goes off fairly often. That's about 30 feet high. And then the pink cone geyser goes off um, not as often, but it does last a long time again, one or two hours when it does go off. So you might get a little lucky in this part here. Then you'll kind of finish the drive here. And then you can park right here at this fountain paint pot parking lot and do this little walk around right here. Let's zoom in on that a little bit more. Here's the the fountain paint pot area. This little walk is under a mile to go around these boardwalks and back so it's a very 
small little spot, but it's an interesting spot because it has the four types of geothermal activity you see in Yellowstone, all four of them right there, which are number one, geysers, which are the ones that shoot in the air, springs, which are just the hot pools. It has the mud pots, which are little boiling pots of mud. And then it has fumaroles, which are steam vents, where it's just kind of spitting out steam. It has all of them, and it actually has some pretty active geysers, like this Klepsydra geyser is always going off. So you're kind of almost guaranteed to see a geyser going there. The next area is the Midway Geyser Basin. Basically, you come down here and you can park in this Grand Prismatic Spring parking lot. And then you'll go out, you'll cross over the river here, and you'll do a little boardwalk. And the main sites there are the Grand Prismatic Spring, Excelsior Geyser, and the Opal Pool. But basically, this is the Grand Prismatic Spring. This is the main way to walk right out there and see it right up close. Very short little walk. When you're done there, drive down to the next spot. This is called the Ferry Falls Trail Parking Lot. You park right here, walk out on this little hike right here and you'll get to a little spot, a little overlook where you'll look down on the Grand Prismatic Spring. It's really a stunning view. You're also likely to see some buffalo hanging around there. Uh, during the fall in the rut they tend to hang out near that Grand Prismatic Spring. When we were there we had one walk right up next to us and I kind of used the vehicle to shield me just in case he turned around and got upset or something. Okay, the next one is the Upper Geyser Basin. This includes Old Faithful, a bunch of geysers right around Old Faithful, also this Black Sand Basin and Biscuit Basin. So it's actually a very large area. In fact, they say 40% um, of the world's geysers are located in this Upper Geyser Basin, I believe. Okay, here's a map of the Upper Geyser Basin. Biscuit Basin, which is misspelled on here, kind of funny, but uh, it has its own parking lot and just a very short little boardwalk out here. But if you head out on this trail, about a, I think it's about a five and a half mile hike to Mystic Falls. This is a cool hike because it takes you up onto an overlook where you can see the whole Upper Geyser Basin, really pretty view of the whole area. And then as you come down from that, you'll run into Mystic Falls, um, which is a really pretty waterfall. The next spot is this Black Sand Basin. Now, I have not been to Black Sand Basin. It's got its own parking lot here. And then, again, just a little walk out. And again, I haven't been there, but uh, I'll put a link to the website below that has some information about that. It looks like a really pretty place and some fairly active geysers with some trees and hills and stuff. I think that is definitely a place I'm going to go next time. The Old Faithful area here. This really deserves a video in and of itself, so maybe I'll do that at some point. Or before you go into the park, check the expect expected geyser times for um, Riverside, Daisy, Grand, and Castle. Okay, those four geysers. Now you know the Old Faithful, which is right there is gonna be going off every 60 to 90 minutes, something like that. The other four, they do predictions for, and so you could kind of plan out your day a little bit, perhaps, you know, by trying to hit this area in the morning or in the evening or in the afternoon, when some of those geysers might be going off. It's, it's at least taking a, worth taking a look at. The other recommendation I have for this area is to download the walking audio tour that is on the Yellowstone official app and it'll it, it takes you on a, a walk through all these geysers and back and it'll tell you about each of the pools and not every last one maybe but it, it'll tell you a little bit about them and but you're going to want to spend quite a bit of time in this area okay the next one is the lone star geyser basin here this is basically just a little, about a five mile hike, a little under five mile hike out to this Lone Star Geyser. And it erupts about every three hours. 
and it does go off for quite a while I think about an hour and when you uh, the funny thing is I've talked to many people who say they happen to see it when they went there so it seems like it's active enough that there's a decent chance you'll see it if you go on that Lone Star Geyser hike. Okay, numbers 8 and 9 are the Shoshone Geyser Basin and the Heart Lake Geyser Basin. They're in those areas right there. These are way off the grid. You'd have to hike though to those and hike about 15 to 20 miles to get there. So it's not likely that you'd get there. It's also recommended that if you go to those, you take a guide because there's not boardwalks like there are in the other ones, so they can be a little more dangerous if you don't know where to walk. Okay, the next one is West Thumb Geyser Basin right here, which is real small, but very popular, very rewarding views. Here's a little map of West Thumb. You can see it's just a little walk around. This is less than a mile, I think, to walk around the whole thing. Okay, and then the last one, kind of over here on its own, Mud Volcano. Couldn't find a very good map of this one, but you don't really need one. It's a very short little boardwalk out among these fumaroles, and you know it's a real stinky area, this Mud Volcano area. So you got Sour Lake, Dragon's Cauldron, Dragon's Mouth. Okay, so those are the 11 geyser basins that help you plan your trip to Yellowstone.